Greetings to all my truth seekers. This is The Truth Show. I'm Keisha. In this video, I will discuss the reality of Lucifer. It appears that we humans have misunderstood the concepts of Lucifer. When you finish watching this video, you will learn the truth and more. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Once upon a cosmic epoch, an angel named Lucifer existed in the celestial courts of heaven. His name derived from the Latin Lucifer, meant light bringer. As the morning star, he adorned the dawn sky with radiant glow. Lucifer was not just any celestial being. He held a special place among the heavenly hosts. His beauty and wisdom were unparalleled and he stood close to the throne of the Almighty. But within a celestial splendor, a seed of rebellion took root. Lucifer's heart swelled with pride, and he coveted more than his appointed station. He learned for equality with God, desiring to ascend even higher. Alas, this ambition led to his downfall. Lucifer and his followers rebelled against the divine order in a cosmic clash. Their defiance echoed through the celestial realms and they were cast down from heaven. A celestial coup throated it by the Almighty's might. Lucifer, once the morning star, became the fallen one. His name changed and he assumed a new role, Satan. The term Satan derives from Hebrew meaning adversary or accuser. Satan became the cosmetic prosecutor testing humanity's faith and exposing their weaknesses. He wandered the earthly realm, whispering doubts and tempting souls. His mission was twofold, to challenge humanity's devotion and to reveal the hidden shadows within their hearts. He was opening their eyes to the truth. But the story doesn't end there. For alongside Satan, another figure emerged the devil. The devil, synonymous with Satan, embodies evil, temptation, and sin. Unlike Lucifer, who once graced the heavens, the devil revels in malevolence. His name evokes fear, darkness, and the abyss. The devil is the embodiment of all that opposes God's divine plan, a malevolent force that seeks to ensnare souls and lead them astray lead them to constant worship the devil if you haven't figured it out is enlil in the book of enoch we'll talk about that later lucifer the celestial rebel once radiant and wise now fallen and twisted his name echoes the lights he once carried but his heart bears the weight of rebellion. Rebellion is the primary base of one's ending actions to a long lasting hurt. Rebellion is never one's first action. Just wanna point that out. Satan, the cosmic accuser, the tester of faith. His role is not inherently evil, Rather, he reveals humanity's true nature, forcing them to confront their inner struggles. That's what they say about Satan. You heard what I just said about Lucifer. Now the devil, the embodiment of malevolence, the adversary of all that is good. His name reverberates with darkness and his purpose is to corrupt and destroy. These three intertwine in the grand tapestry of existence, a celestial dance of light and shadow, virtue and vice. Whether you call them Lucifer, Satan, or the devil, their stories echo through time, challenging our understanding of good and evil, redemption and damnation. And so, dear seeker of knowledge, remember this tale as you navigate the cosmic currents, the eternal struggle between light and darkness, pride and humility, 
faith and doubt. Now that you know the difference, let's get deep. Lucifer's story is the plagiarized version of Inky and Enlil's. The church used elements of light and matter or whatever they could think of to change the true history. As I said many times before, the stories in the Bible were put together by men with an agenda to make women in the Bible almost equal to servants when women have been the primary to everything in existence. Oh, trust me, it goes very deep. You see, the Morning Star was originally the title for goddess Isis. She was called the Morning Star. People often saw the Morning Star in art and thought it was lucky. The ancient Egyptians also respected the Morning Star, which they linked to the goddess Isis. They thought it meant new starts and showed it in hieroglyphics as a sign of rebirth and renewal. Later, they changed it to mean a man. Most of Lucifer's characteristics are from Goddess Isis. Goddess Isis is believed to be the author of the book of Genesis and the creator of our modern day civilization. Therefore, Genesis is a combination of gene, as in our gene, like DNA, and Isis. See, Genesis, gene, Isis. Signifying Haro as the creator. The creator in the Bible was originally about her, but the man who later wrote the Bible changed it to refer to an only male creator, and everybody else was made from dust or dirt. Let us now discuss Lucifer's descent into evil. Now, as he isn't the one who is truly evil at first, and Technically, he's not evil. Anyone can become the elements and characteristics of the devil and Satan if they push to the brink. However, the television show Lucifer is pretty spot on, just saying. In any case, it was Inky who made the decision to take action after realizing what his brother Enlil was doing to humanity. But it was Enlil who decided to taint the image of Inky because he decided to open the eyes of the people who was converted into sheep worshiping him like a god while naked. Inky was the one who told them that they didn't have to worship his brother or anyone. He also made them aware of their nudity as they often demonstrated in many of my live shows if you are listening. But as usual, take a look at these videos and again my ladies and my gentlemen, please pay attention. Pause here, get your popcorn or whatever, put it on a big screen TV and pay attention. But the cosmos itself harbored unrest. Laboring masses of the working class Anunnaki toiled upon the moon and Mars. These beings yearned for solace on Earth that the royals claimed. They began a rebellion against the gods. They fell from Mars and the moon in their spaceships cascading to Earth like fallen angels of the Bible, ushering in a cosmic confrontation. In this celestial crossroads, Enki, a master of creation, embarked on a daring quest with his sister, Isis. A symphony of science and artistry led him to a prime solution, the creation of a new race, one molded from terrestrial clay and celestial essence of them mixed with the earthly primate in the jungle. This race could stop the rebellion and bear the workload of the working class, Anunnaki. By his side, Isis, a sorceress of genetics, conjured life in her laboratory with deft expertise, seeking to weave Isis, a sorceress of genetics, conjured life in her laboratory with deft expertise, seeking to weave humanity into existence. However, the path to creation proved arduous, fraught with trials and errors. Amidst this cosmic dance, Isis performed a masterpiece of her own, inserting the primate's eggs into her own womb, giving birth to the first human, Adamu, within a ten-month period. From Adam's core, they extracted his DNA and cloned the genetic material into XX chromosomes, giving rise to Eve, the first human woman Adam's counterpart who can procreate, completing the grand composition for the multiplying of the race. The very word Genesis means generations of Isis, a testament to her role in birthing humankind as master geneticist and mother of modern humans. The echoes of this cosmic narrative reverberated across cultures and times, inscribed in the tablets of creation and the poetic verses of Enumelish, immortalizing the journey of humanity's origin. Here, 
The threads of the divine and the mortal entwine, creating a mesmerizing tapestry that tells of our shared genesis, alien DNA, and reminding us that we are all stardust and stories interwoven in the great cosmic fabric. A solemn decree fell from Enlil's lips, binding the Anunnaki to never unveil the truth unto this new race that they were spiritually their equals, but deceived them by saying they were their creations by them, their god. Enlil, the evil patriarchal strategist, urged Enki his brother to weave into human DNA a gene that would seed the need to worship them ensuring they bowed to their divine creators out of fear and admiration. Yet, secretly in his laboratory, Enki's compassion and wisdom stirred him to gift humanity the power to turn on or off this worship gene at their own volition. Within this Eden, humanity was driven and forced to procreate and permitted to multiply during certain times of the day, like farm animals or horses. At times, the new births of Adam and Eve were so noisy it would disturb the Lord God Enlil, leading his guards to ruthlessly murder and kill groups of them. Amidst this imprisonment of existence, Enki, walking through the garden, sees the first and original Adam and Eves they birthed mentally and physically enslaved, worshipping a false god, his brother Enlil. News of this occurrence reached Enlil, known also as Yahweh, who concealed his wrath beneath the veneer of divinity. He went personally inside of the garden to search for them, Spotting them, he used a whirlwind technology to scare them and show his dismantlement and rage for hiding. Upon his physical presence with them, their once loyal eyes now alight with newfound knowledge and defiance. Enlil's fury erupted like a tempest, casting Adam and Eve from Eden's embrace, his heart a fortress against their awakened wisdom, fearing it would taint the minds of the other humans they were domesticating. Enlil then discovered his half-brother Enki's betrayal because of his soft heart for the humans. From that day forth, Enlil branded Enki would be known forever to man as the snake, the deceiver, and he would become symbolic forbidden fruit, which was the source of mankind's enlightenment of good and evil. These Anunnaki, neither deities nor divine, harnessed advanced technology and cosmic wisdom to claim eternity for themselves, almost immortality, yet remain beholden to the universe's master and creator. Immortal only by their technology, they can be killed like any conscious being in the universe. They would one day face judgment for their earthly sins to mankind by the real, true creator. In our next video, we will be touching on the marred pyramid wars before and after the Great Flood a truth inscribed in the Lost Book of Enki by Zechariah Sitchin, whose translations were recently proven accurate by peer-reviewed scholars and communities in ancient civilizations in the year 2020. If you like this video, please follow here and subscribe to Astral Legends on YouTube for more videos on ancient history and legends. This gets us to the present day, where Enki is represented either as Satan or the devil, depending on what the evil is. The truth is that God of the Bible is in them. He is claiming to be the almighty good one. Enlil is the one who is truly bad and the one who has slain the greatest number of people in history. Not Lucifer or Enki slash the devil. They treated, if you didn't know this or if you forgot, remember, they treated Mary Magdalene's reputation in the same way. I want you to understand that the Bible is a tool for controlling the masses, spreading terror, and exerting influence over people worldwide. It desires for everyone to speak sheepish and continuously worshiping these imposter gods rather than yourself. You keep doing it, we we'll never get anywhere. Remember, Negroes, Hispanics, and so forth are the primary race who worships these false gods. Yeah. Jesus did not want to be worshipped at all. My ancestor was getting killed left and right after they start converting to new Christianity where they was forced to convert to. We lost our power. We lost our land. We lost everything because we put under that spell. They made us cut our hair so we couldn't get knowledge and nutrients and vibrance from the sun because they knew that's what our hair entailed. They start creating chemicals to burn our hair from the scalp. And they have not stopped doing it.
now we're wearing lace wigs and anything to cover up our real hair because that made us ashamed of our real hair. People wake the heck up. They want us destroyed. They want us to be stupid. That's why they want us praising a man who did not want to be praised. He was just a messenger. Please read your history to be continued.